Hello there. In this quick start video, I'm going to use a Yamaha Reface CS to record MIDI data into Cubase. I'm also going to capture the audio signal from this synthesizer. So I've installed the driver, I've connected the USB port to the computer, and I've connected the outputs to my audio hardware inputs. The first step to recording MIDI data is to add a MIDI track. VST instruments and sampler tracks are also controlled using MIDI data, but we're going to talk about them in a later video. First off, I've added the track and I've named it. I'm checking my MIDI input routing and I'm also selecting the MIDI channel that I want to transmit to. So you need to make sure your external MIDI device is set to the right channel. I want to record both the MIDI information and the audio signal. So I've set up a stereo audio track. If you've set everything up correctly, you'll be able to see both MIDI and audio activity down in the bottom right hand corner. Now it's a matter of record enabling both channels, so Cubase captures the MIDI and audio. Before I hit record, I'm going to the transport menu, metronome setup, and I'm selecting a pre-count of one bar. As soon as I hit record, Cubase will give me a one bar count in. In the project window, I can now see that I'm recording both the MIDI data and the stereo audio signal from my external Yamaha synthesizer. I can also record MIDI data like pitch bend information as part of the MIDI file. I've finished recording and I've got two events, MIDI and audio. Now that would be great if that was my final take, but I'm not really happy with what I played and I can't change the audio. So I'm going to turn the record enable off, leave the monitor on so we can hear what we're editing and I'm going to delete that audio take. The great thing about working with MIDI data is we can change the MIDI data down below and then re-record the audio from the external synthesizer. It's important to understand what happens when we record MIDI data. As soon as I hit record and press a note, a message is sent from the keyboard to the computer to say the note has been played and then it also tells the computer when the note's been released. It also captures other really important information like velocity how hard we've pressed a note. At the end of this recording, I use pitch bend data. So you can see that pitch bend data there at the start and at the end. The only problem is I didn't mean to record it at the start. So now I'm drawing a box around that data and just hitting delete. In addition to recording information about notes and when they're pressed and how hard they're pressed, we can use the controller lane to see other important MIDI data. MIDI is still a really important protocol because it means that we can go in and we can edit information that we've recorded. For instance, I can use the toolbar to do things like add notes. I can go and change the length of notes, which is really important to get an even sound, especially if you're not the world's most amazing piano player or keyboard player. I've selected the scissors tool and I'm chopping one event into two events. It's almost the same as editing out in the project window, except now I can do things like mute an individual note rather than an entire event. I've opened the window up to get an even broader perspective of the part that I've just recorded. In the MIDI editor, you'll notice there's a grid. Bar lines are highlighted and then there's subdivisions which are fainter white lines behind it. I can edit individual notes and try and make them more in time with the grid, or I can edit everything at once. But before I do that, it helps to understand how the grid works. We can snap onto the grid by clicking on this button, but we can change the grid settings by clicking on this drop down menu here. If I select whole notes or one one, when I pick up on the start of this MIDI event, I can only lock it in to the start of each bar, which is great for long notes, but not so good for this particular part. Now I've selected quarter notes and you can see that I can only lock on to each beat of the bar. As I go for a smaller setting, there are more subdivisions, giving me more timing options. It really wouldn't be time efficient for me to go in and edit each individual note here. So I'm going to select them all by hitting Command or Control A. You can also do it by selecting Edit, Select All. Now they're all highlighted. And I can go back up to that Quantize window and click on the Quantize button or simply hit Q on your computer keypad. And you can see they've all locked perfectly into that grid. The key to getting our MIDI data perfectly in time is to get the right grid setting. If you get it wrong, it just sounds strange. I'd suggest trying a lower setting and moving it up until it sounds right. Editing MIDI data is not just about timing alone. I've already shown you the controller lane. Now whilst everything's selected, I'm going down to the controller lane, increasing the view, and hovering my mouse just over the top of the velocity. 
I can hold my mouse button down and drag all of the velocities down, or I can drag them all up. When they're at their highest point, they're all set to the highest velocity, which is quite hard. The controller lanes make it easy to access additional MIDI information and see how they relate to individual notes. Recording and editing MIDI from any device is really easy. Once we've finished editing, we can simply record enable the track and re-record the audio from our external synthesizer. It's worth pointing out that Cubase comes loaded with VST instruments, so in the next video, we're going to look at the internal instruments that come inside of Cubase. I'll catch you over there.